What is up? My fellow achievements, hopefully all of you are having a very good day today because today is a day to where we should be happy because it is the return of a series that I hold very dear to me and I know many might actually be shocked to see this video because if you're new to my channel, you're probably like, whoa, why are you talking about this? Well, anyways, it's the return of Ruby. Ruby Volume 5 Episode 1 is here. Now, if you're wondering where you go and watch this, obviously it's on Rooster Teeth's main site. If you're a first member, you can watch it today. And if you're not a first member, you wait till tomorrow and you'll be able to watch it for free. But anyways, though, Ruby Volume 5, or Season 5 if you want to call it that, is finally here. And I am just so glad to have this back. It's a series I truly love. I've always been a big fan of Rooster Teeth. I don't think I've really hid that fact a lot at all. I've always loved Rooster Teeth's works. I actually keep up with their YouTube channel and all that. And I love, you know, Red vs. Blue and stuff. And so seeing this back once again, it's just another thing I can look forward to every week from them. And I'm just happy. I I'm just very, very happy to have Ruby Volume 5 here. So anyways, though, Volume 5, starting off with a bang. Big bang. Like, a lot of information. A lot of characters, just a lot of status updates, and some really good, you know, character moments. I mean, one of the big moments I want to point out that really stood out to me was John's moment in this episode. Now, many might not have noticed because it's easy to miss things when you're just getting into an episode and you watch it for one time. You could easily just not notice it and it slips right over your head. But thankfully, I noticed it after watching it a couple of times because I really love Ruby and I just want to kind of figure out everything that's going on behind the scenes. Because Rooster Teeth has done a very good job in recent seasons to kind of hide a little bit of hidden emotions behind the scenes with characters, like with their actions of how they carry themselves or how they stand amongst everybody else. You can see that there's certain emotions that they're hiding. And in this case, John is a big character in this episode. Now, he wasn't the big spotlight of the episode, but there was a moment that really stood out and could possibly structure future plot points with his character which is the scene when he asks about Pyrrha, or Cinder, and how Cinder could, you know, be found, or any information on Cinder. And soon as he finds out that there's no information or anything like that, he balls his fist up. And then he, you can see, like, it, it's very subtle, but he balls his fist up and he puts it down on his side, and when he's walking, he actually doesn't let go and, you know, unclose his fist until he, like, leaves the room. So it shows that he is still... Still very angry for the loss of someone that he truly deeply cared about. And we saw this, a glimpse of this, in the previous season. Season 4, we saw him, you know, going through a video and all that after she was already long gone. And you can see how he was carrying on her legacy, trying to train and all that, even though she is gone. And we know he's carried these feelings within him. But we, for the first time, I think, we've actually seen this certain rage within him. We see that he is truly angry. When you see him ball up his fist, and emphasizes the fact that... He definitely wants to see something happen to Cinder. He wants to get rid of Cinder. In a way, this could be a potential start of a revenge story for John. John wants to get vengeance against what happened to Pyrrha and get it against, you know, Cinder. You know, go after her. That possibly could be what Rooster Teeth is setting up here because of the emotions he showed in this episode. Now, anyways, another thing to get into... Let's also talk about the fact with Ruby. In this episode, there was a little bit of a hidden element with her character as well that needs to be pointed out, which is something I was really glad to see. Because out of all of the characters, I think, of our main cast of characters when it comes to, you know, Ruby, Yavador Ruby, she's actually the one that lacks the most development. She needs a lot of development. I've discussed this quite a bit in my earlier reviews and all that of the previous season, she is a character that vastly and greatly needs development. She needs to go through some characterization and development more. And it seems like Rooster Teeth is trying to finally tackle this, especially with the start of this season. And let me explain why. When you see Penny be brought up once again, she was brought up and mentioned and all that, and you had to wear Lionheart's like, you know, when that girl was torn apart on the screen, everybody saw it, that was Penny. And soon as, you know, you see Ruby's face and the way she acted, you can see she got really upset. You could see it just hit her, just smacked her right back into reality, and she realized who she lost. So it does show that the death of Penny, or what happened to Penny, is still within her. She has not forgot about that loss. It's not gone. It's not just Pyrrha. 
and the loss of Pira as well, and what John's going through, but also Ruby is going through her own issues as well, and how she has a loss of a friend as well, Penny, and you can see that with her emotions. So these two things right here are definitely setups for the future of the series. Maybe not this season, but for when they finally encounter the people that did to the ones they loved, like they harmed the ones they loved, then I feel like that's going to be a very important moment for these characters and what role they're going to take or what direction they're going to take with their character for the future of the series. So anyways, let's get into some of the main things that we found out. Like I said, a lot of information. We get some information on the Maidens and kind of what their purpose is. Now, we already know how they use magic and stuff. That's already been established. But what we found out, though, is that the relics, the each individual relics and all that, that are safeguarded, well, apparently... Only the Maidens can access the room to where the relics are, which is very, very important information. So this explains why not all of the relics have been captured before, because if there's, like, some Maidens that are just off the grid, nobody knows where they're at and all that, and they're not good or evil, but they're just neutral and staying out of it, then obviously nobody's going to ever be able to access that room and get to the relics. So this shows why certain sides are hunting down the Maidens while they're trying to find them, because they need to be able to access the room to where the relics are. So this explains a lot, really crucial information, and it's definitely kicking into high gear for this arc, because we're right now trying to find the Spring Maiden, that's the big objective right now, and what Rooster Teeth is trying to set up with this new season of Ruby, is that we need to find the Spring Maiden, and we need to, you know, be able to get the Relic and safeguard it as well. So that's what's being set up here, but we also have it to where, since we know Lionheart was working with the enemy, Watts, I think that's how you say his name, He's working with the enemy, obviously the entire conversation that was going on this episode when, you know, Crow was explaining what was happening, or, you know, he gave information on his sister and all that Raven, but also, you know, he was giving information about the Spring Maiden and all these different things, the enemy also heard this. So it's not just going to be like, you know, our group of characters, our main good characters, going after Raven and then trying to find the Spring Maiden, but also the enemy side as well. So it seems like this season, for what Rooster Teeth is trying to do, they're trying to emphasize the fact that Raven is going to be very crucial. And she is a character that has been built up, I think, since season two or three. Like, I'm talking about, like, when we first saw Raven. I, I think the first glimpse we had of Raven was season three. I, I could be wrong there. I could be wrong. But I believe it was season three. If not, it was season two. It's one of those seasons. But... Raven is a character that has been built up for a very long time. Like, many fans of the series, myself included, have been wanting to get more information about Raven, her overall main objective, and just why she acts like she does. There's just so many questions many of us have about her. And it seems like Rooster Teeth is finally ready to probably dive into her character and give us more details because right now everybody, Yang, Blake, Weiss, and then also Ruby, they're all going to one area to find Raven, get over to her, and then find the Spring Maiden. So with all of this going on, everybody is going to like the same location. So everybody's going to do a meetup. We're going to have a reunion, but also Raven is the big focus matter besides just the Spring Maiden. Raven is very important. So I cannot wait to see how this is going to be done for this season, because I have been very fascinated, because I wanted to know more about Raven for a very long time, for years now actually, and it seems like we're finally going to be getting that very soon. So anyways, let's talk about Lionheart for a second. So, it's obvious from the way Lionheart presents himself in, you know, this season, the first episode of season 5, it's obvious that he is being forced to do these things, work with the enemy. And if I had to assume anything, if I'm just going on a cliche note, I, I don't know if Rooster Teeth wants to go this path, because they can do anything they want, but if I had to go down a cliche path that's obvious, I'm assuming that Lionheart, probably someone he deeply cares about, has been taken hostage. Someone that he truly loves or cares about, probably, has been taken hostage, and that's why he's following the orders of the villains. That would explain a lot. And, like I said, it's something very cliche and something you would see a lot in different forms of literature to add conflict, but also this would mean that Lionheart's not necessarily a bad guy. I mean, the way he was interacting and all that, it's obvious he's not a bad guy at heart. He does deeply care about people. He does care about, you know, everyone that's part of his school and all that. He does care. But at the same time, his hands are tied to where he can't do anything right now, and he's just being controlled. He can't do anything about it. And so the best way to keep everybody safe is by listening to them, and hopefully everything will go back to normal 
eventually. So it's obvious that he's probably going to be a good guy in the end game, but most likely something is being used against him. Either the citizens or someone he cares about, like a relative or something, someone's being used against him to be able to make him work with them. Now, let's talk about Crow for a second, okay? So Crow was a big spotlight for this episode. In terms of just comedy, there was a lot of lot of funny moments with him. Like, the man straight up went and got drunk. And I'm like, I missed this. I, I remember the last time he got drunk, it was pretty funny. Dr uh, Crow getting drunk. I'm like, Drunk Crow is just amazing. He, he goes out his way, he's getting drunk and all that. And he's just sitting there when he finally sees Oz or Oscar. He's like, I found him! I found him! He's on the couch. I was like, I found him! I'm like... You, crow, 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 crow. Listen to me, listen to me, man, okay? You didn't find him. I I, I know you're drunk, but you, you didn't find him. Oscar came to you, and then he said he was Oz. You just gave the man a cane. That, that, that's all you did. You didn't find him. So I just really love that moment. It's really comedic, and it's typical Rooster Teeth to add stuff like this in because they have always been really good when it comes to comedy. I mean, when you think about Red vs. Blue, it was mainly comedy-based as well, and then they started to dive into more of a serious plot line. And we do know that Ruby has its fair share of comedy moments, so seeing this with Crow, I didn't feel like it really ruined the atmosphere of the episode, and I've noticed over the years, many, many years that Rooster Teeth has been doing stuff like this, making their own series, they have learned how to balance comedy in serious moments. I mean, they're not perfect. They're not perfect at it. Nobody is perfect, and no writer is perfect, but you can see they have a lot of experience with handling comedy in serious moments. And the way you shift from these serious moments like John and Ruby and all that reflecting on the loss of their friends to over to Crow getting drunk and all that with Oscar, you know, having Oz inside of him or whatever, I, I like the tone shift, and Rooster Teeth handled it pretty well. I have no problems with it whatsoever. So, I feel like it was a splendid first episode of Season 5. I like all the setup and what's going to be happening. I especially love the Yang scene. Oh, man. I love that scene to when she's, like, trying to grab the glass. And then her real hand, I think that's her real hand or whatever, starts to shake. Which shows that she's realizing, like, how she lost her main original and it still bugs her to this day. I really like that segment as well, but I, I like the entire Yang scene because the art and animation of that looked really good. And that's actually something I want to talk about before I end this video. The art and animation. Okay, so I know for a fact when it comes to the community, what people generally think of Ruby, if you're not a watcher or not a fan of Rooster Teeth, people tend to look at Ruby as if it looks like an abomination. It looks awful. I mean, I, let's just, let's embrace the fact, okay? I, I Look, I'm a fan of Ruby. I love Ruby. I, I wouldn't be talking about it if I didn't like it. But one of the big things that many have discussed so many times, throughout many seasons, for years now, when it comes to Ruby, is the fact that it's CGI, and not many people really like it because it's like a wannabe anime, or it just, it doesn't look that good. But, over time, you can see throughout the seasons, from Volume 1, to Volume 2, to Volume 3, to Volume 4, to Volume 5, it has improved. Every single volume that has come out, you could see an actual improvement on the art and animation. And that is something that really shows. If you go back to look at Volume 1 of Ruby, and then you come back to this latest episode, you could see a massive improvement. So, it does show that Rooster Teeth, yes, at one point, it didn't look that good. I, I'll admit that. Ruby Volume 1 didn't look that good. It didn't. I mean, it was, it was an amazing story. I liked the characters and all that. I liked it, but it didn't look good. Uh, just face the facts here, okay? And you can see that they have improved considerably when it comes to the way they present their story, especially the art style, the CGI, and all that. It just looks much better. And it, this season, definitely the start of it, looks much better than what I have seen, honestly, from Ruby. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, also talking about the opening song and ending song, I guess that's something I should discuss. I think the opening song is really, really anime-ish. It, it, it's really anime, and I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing, honestly, because it's obvious that the style of the series is anime-based, and also since, you know, Rooster Teeth has become very popular in Japan, and they now have, like, a Japanese, you know, dub of the series, it makes sense why they would have a little bit more anime style to the series. It just, I feel like some might be bugged about the opening song, how it feels kind of anime-ish and all that, because of just the way it's presented. You see the fighting going on, and then the 1v1s in the opening song. It just looks like an anime, like a shown an anime opening. I don't think it's a problem, but I could see many not necessarily liking it because they don't want to think Ruby is an anime, or don't want to associate anime with Ruby. So I want to end it there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and can't wait. Can't wait to see episode 2 next week. Let me know your thoughts, how you felt about this premiere of season 5, 
subscribe. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if for some reason you don't like my video, well, leave a dislike as well. I mean, that's your opinion if you think that. So, yeah, if you want to support me for I could continue to focus on YouTube, please go in the description and support me on Patreon. It does help me out a lot. And so I love you guys. Please be safe. Chibi out.